Hey Moon Magic family, welcome back to the channel and happy Easter. Today is Easter Sunday and we are asking Spirit what you are meant to hear right here and right now. What is the message that is so important for you to hear on this magical Easter day? And also whether there are any other messages, any information that Spirit wishes to let you know about for the coming week ahead so that you can actually navigate your week with awareness. Now, we're also going to be guided in today by these three beautiful feathers. They are all from Birds of Prey. This is a red kite feather, and this is going to be sitting with our card for reading number one. This is an owl feather, and this will be sitting with our card for reading number two. Okay, you see that? And this is a buzzard feather. Okay, and this will be sitting with our reading for reading number three. Okay, so let's draw some cards to guide you in. So reading number one, you have earthworm. How beautiful. Sitting with, oh wow, well, uh, well, I'm not going to share what just the wow that came to me, but I'll share it when we get to the reading. <laughs> uh, I apologise, that was such a spontaneous, oh wow moment. Okay, so we have the red kite with the earthworm card for reading one. That's pile one and pile two. Here we have pile two, please. Here we go. Pile two, you have sea serpent. And this is sitting with the owl feather here. Okay. And then for reading number three, we have the buzzard feather. And we are being shown, what are we being shown for reading number three? We have the deer, the energy of the deer. How beautiful. Okay. So I am going to draw some runes as well. Let's see what we are shown. Okay, so reading number one, we have the blank rune. Reading number two, we have the rune of harvest. And reading number three, I can feel it. <laughs> And reading number three, we have the Rune of Ice. Beautiful. Okay. So, Super Souls, I'm going to leave the video running for a moment longer just to give you a little bit of time. I might actually just adjust the lighting. There, I hope that makes the cards a little bit clearer. There's so much light in here, even though it's actually quite cloudy outside by my window. But anyway, so, so much light coming in on this beautiful Easter day. So Super Souls, uh, the timestamps are in the description box and also in the pinned comment for phone users to find. Um, I will see you in the readings in just a moment. If you're drawn to more than one, just trust that gut instinct because it may mean that there is more than one message for you here today. Tons of love and I will see you in the readings in just a moment. Hey, reading number one, welcome. And wow, I did that whole kind of spontaneous thing when I was drawing these first cards and I said I would then discuss it or voice it here. What just came through to me was, it, it's a saying, worm to eagle. And I just went, oh, wow. Worm to eagle is encompassing, honoring all of life, whether it is, you know, a, a, a mighty eagle flying high with an incredible vision or a humble earthworm and acknowledging the equality of all of life, the reverence of all of life. With the blank rune here, for starters, you have a message here, right here and right now that spirit wishes to give you, which is that you're on track. You're doing something, you're trying to birth something into the world, you're trying to bring something forth and 
you know, it may be that you're having a little wobble or you're feeling as though other people are better at it than you or that you, you've got skills yet to learn and you're feeling a bit daunted. Your message is loud and clear, my beautiful pile number one. Um, persevere, keep at it. Even um, an eagle had to learn to fly when it was a tiny fledgling in the nest. This is something that's worthy of investing in. So let's just move that card and that beautiful feather over and your rune and let's see what else we are shown. So may we have information, we have a message already. I'm just going to look at the card on the bottom. Desk, pay attention to your work. Would you believe those feathers there? Look at that sitting on the desk. I mean you just you couldn't predict that, could you? Look at those feathers. I've just said, you know, you are, you're starting something or you're, yeah, you're creating something, writing something, doing something. And I think you are having a little bit of a, oh, is it going to be successful? Is it worth the investment? Am I really good enough? Um, you have some more skills to learn, but that's cool. Pay attention to your work. The feathers are here on your desk. Wow. This is just, wow, okay, amazing. We also have these two little figures. Can you see? I think it is as if the legs of the desk are made or carved into little people. Okay, little tiny figures there. How interesting. Hmm. I think you're bringing something quite significant forth into the world. I always feel like you're tapping into some sort of ancestral knowledge, some ancestral wisdom of some sort. Tankard, celebration, fun, enjoyment, and then skull, hidden secrets can harm you. Hmm, what are you delving into? What are you, um, what's this hidden secrets? The interesting thing is, I'm not feeling any harm. This is worthy of investment. What this is actually telling me, I think, um, sometimes with these cards, I'm not always sure that the when we read them, the the actual little bit of writing isn't always exactly how the interpretation needs to be within the reading. I think this is exactly that that you are tapping into something um, from the from the ancestors. It's like ancestral knowledge, ancestral wisdom. And you're going to be able to bring it forth in some way, shape or form. Let's draw some more Oracle cards for you, first of all. A couple more and see what we are shown. That is yours, reading number one. Beautiful, beautiful people. And may we have more information, please, for reading number one. What is the message that Spirit wishes you to have beyond persevere? Pay attention to your work. Get to it. Okay, nettle, action. Absolutely, get to it. This is Mars and Pluto. So this is about birthing. It's, it's literally about taking action so you can birth something into the world. So you're going to be able to celebrate it, enjoy it, enjoy your achievements. The slave dances into freedom. Wow. Whatever it is you are working on, I appreciate that I think you are wondering whether it will really rise to the heights that you would like it to. Will it really soar? Will it really take off? Um, in some ways, it does have some quite earthy, humble origins. You are tuning in to some kind of ancestral wisdom, some kind of ancestral knowledge. If you're writing, even doing something to do with a family tree, that there's something about ancestral knowledge that's coming in through your work. This is your, your ticket to freedom. This is the project, the idea that is going to gift you with exactly what you need to move your world forwards in a really good way. So this is really worth persevering with. And yes, there is some stuff that you need to continue to develop. You have to continue to invest in it. You know, I had a conversation with someone the other day and I loved the saying. I hadn't heard it before. He said, I, he was about to go to work and he said, I'm, I'm just moving into my half man, half desk mode. 
And I really liked that. I'd never heard it before and I thought, I totally get it, you know. So kind of somehow actually that focus, that work focus being there. But you are tuning into or bringing forth something that connects to ancestral knowledge, um, historical knowledge, um, wh wh wherever it comes from. It's really interesting because it's actually very grounding. Whatever you're bringing forth, you are bringing forth something that can help people, I think, to kind of soar, to liberate themselves or to see more clearly, maybe even to access their own inner sight, access their own higher mind. Whatever you are bringing forth, there's a lot of crystals here around this snake, but whatever you're bringing forth, it's very anchored and very grounded. It's a very pragmatic, practical, helpful tool, book, video, whatever you're doing, whatever you're making. It's actually very practical, but it really helps. It really helps people. Uh, and actually, this is your ticket to freedom. This is going to take off. It really, really is. Let's draw some more cards. May we have more information. I mean, your primary message is, is get to it. <laughs> reading number one, get to it. May we have more information for reading number one. Perhaps the heads up about the shape of the week ahead, because we've got a clear message. Keep going, go for it. You may have a few more skills to do. You may need to become a half man or half woman, half desk person for a little while, or certainly for this week. But go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it. Ten of Cups, okay, lovely. We have the Ten of Cups, we have the King of Wands, and we have the Eight of Swords. I always feel like of all the Eight of Swords, you know, in the different packs, this is like victory. You know, it's like, yes, I overcome that. I overcame those demons of procrastination. And yeah, there is a bit of procrastination here. Now, it is interesting. I'm, I don't usually read cards in reverse, but I'm actually going to today. So for those of you that follow my readings, you'll be curious as to, to this. But yeah, I'm going to today. So what we see here and the Six of Cups in reverse is a card. This is a card of nostalgia. It's a card, but it's a turning point. Now, because it's in reverse, what I'm actually seeing under the Eight of Swords is that genuinely this is this idea, this creative project, whatever you're bringing forth, it really, really is a recipe for success. It's going to bring you the golden ticket, the golden fleece. Can you see that the Five of Wands here? This is Jason and the Argonauts and he has been sent on a quest. And he was sent on a quest by somebody that ultimately kind of didn't really want him to succeed. And he's finally found the Golden Fleece. This is what he's been looking for. And it's in the hands of this dragon. And he's somehow got to work out how to get the Golden Fleece. And, and indeed he does. Help comes in here in the assistance of, of somebody who I think comes in with like a magic potion of some sort that enables him to actually put the dragon to sleep and, and to, to access the golden fleece. So my point is, in these cards here, I think you've, you're on a kind of a mission and you know what you want to bring forth. And it's super good. It's a fantastic idea. You've kind of been loving it from the moment you thought of it, the moment you started working on it. But I think you've got a little bit daunted there's been some, an element of procrastination and an element, I would say, of self-doubt. It's as if it's been quite hard to hold your resolve with the Queen of Swords in, re in reverse. But actually, you're going to overcome this. You will overcome this. And this really is your ticket to success. The Six of, of Cups is a card where it stuff changes, stuff can change. And when we when we see it in the upright position, there's a kind of a, a breaking open point, but there's some kind of sadness and some reminiscing and it's quite a still card. I'm seeing it in reverse as the moment at which, because of the Eight of Swords, that you kind of break through, you push through. That's what I'm seeing here. There's no need to sit still um, 
and reminisce or think about where you've come from or what you don't yet know. This is time to push through, take action and help will come as you need it. Help will just arrive. In fact, I would say given that this is a weekly reading, I post these every Sunday, I think as long as you commit to a clear timetable of working, half man, half woman, half person, half desk, <laughs> I think as long as you commit to the time that you can and you enjoy what you're doing, take an attitude of really enjoying what you can do when you can do it. Don't get tangled. Honestly, this is this is happening. You may even as well get some early reward, recognition, acknowledgement. Literally a ticket, a golden ticket, something being handed to you. I mean, I think it is your ticket to freedom, to be quite honest. I think it's going to, to potentially be mega, mega successful. And maybe you're having a wobble. You might even be thinking, should I really invest in this? Because will, you know, it's a lot of work, basically. It's a lot of work, but will the outcome be enough? Am I going to get it right enough? And the answer is absolutely yes. And it's now time to push through those self-doubts, face those fears. You've got, you've got the end goal in mind. You know what you really, really, really want to do. And you've been loving the idea. It's time for action. Truly, it's time for action. Push through any aspect of procrastination this week and invest, invest, invest and enjoy it. Beautiful pile number one, because this is absolutely an affirmation of the longer term success of your idea. And it is a real nudge, prod, bit of a kick up the bum kind of feeling about it, <laughs> saying, go on, get going, go for it. Come on, you've got to get to the finish line. Look at this. Can you see there's a finish line here? Yeah, you've got to get to the finish line here. It's really worth it. Really, really worth it. There's going to be so much to share. Okay, so, so much to share when you get to the finish line. So don't falter. Don't hold back. Go for it. This is a week of activity for you, of activity, of action. And if anything gets in the way, if you feel like you meet a hurdle or a challenge, don't worry about it. Just push through. Push through. Celebrate the wins as you go. Celebrate the kind of each step as you go, each time you something gets in the way and you just attend to what you've got to attend to and then you crack on with it again and every time you do you're going to get that sense of personal satisfaction yeah it, it's it's an amazing idea project whatever it is that you are personally working from on you know this is a a reading it's a general reading so it's going to apply to your unique circumstances but wow I mean, talk about hatching an egg. <laughs> in a way, this rune, the blank rune, it's, it is like an unhatched egg. It's something that's in gestation. Well, my beautiful pile one people, this is a week of push through and go for it. And a lovely message of affirmation that this is absolutely worthy of the investment and the level of success at the finish line will be amazing. So push through and go, go, go. I think that that is really your reading for this week, beautiful pile one. Thank you for joining me. It's a super, super lovely reading. It really is. Thank you so, so much for being here. I do post these weekly readings every Sunday, though ultimately it's a timeless reading. We find the right reading at the right time. On a Tuesday and a Friday, because these are Sunday readings, on a Tuesday and a Friday, I always post a pick a card reading answering a very specific question and some shorts in between. So if there's any uh, any questions you want to uh, check in on, um, if you're having a little bit of a wobble. Um, I do also put those readings into a timeless readings playlist, so you could check those out if you need to follow through and ask a few more questions about any particular area. And also, if you subscribe and press the, press the little bell icon, 
all of my readings hopefully will come into your stream and you won't miss any. Um, Super Souls, thank you so, so much for joining me today and I wish you an amazingly productive week. Um, beautiful reading number one, people. Hey, reading number two, welcome. You have the beautiful Owl Feather. You have the Rune of Harvest, Jira and Sea Serpent. This is really interesting because this is a card of expression. And I feel like with the Rune of Harvest here, something is coming a full circle. And with this sort of central part, it looks like an eye. And I always think owls have the most, I mean, it does look like a, the eye of an owl. Um, Something is coming a full circle, something's coming to harvest, to completion in some way, shape or form for you guys this week. But let's see what is the message that Spirit really wants to voice to you right here and right now. May we please have information before I am seeing those two cards and also the one on the bottom. What do we have on the bottom? We have fire, strong emotion, passionate love or hate. Okay, which is really interesting because this is a card of strong emotions as well. It sometimes indicates emotional healing. Something comes a full circle. We then have finger. Okay. And younger man, dealings with a younger man. Okay. Now this finger is pointing something to you, warning you of a problem either now or in the near future. Something is coming a full circle. Mm. Something is coming to light. Something gets seen this week. Mm. Let's draw some more cards. I'm very intrigued reading number two. What are we being shown here for you? What is the message that spirit wishes you to be aware of right here and right now? So we are seeing a younger man coming into the picture here. And very strong emotions. May we have information please for reading number two, please. May we have, there we are, information for you guys. What do we have here? We have grandmother of love, granddaughter of life. And then we have sage card of blessing. Now this is the moon and Jupiter. Okay, this is cleansing. Yeah, this is healing, this is cleansing. Your whole reading is suggesting some sort of healing, some kind of cleansing, some kind of um, strong emotions being, I almost want to say either laid to rest or coming a full circle. Something's coming to harvest fruition. Hmm, we need more cards for you, my dearest reading number two. Oh, what do we have? May we have information for reading number two? Hmm, let me take this one too. There's two there. Okay. This one and this one. Okay, what do we have for reading number two? So we have five of wands. Okay, how interesting. It feels like, I think you're feeling at this present time as if somebody is standing in your way. Okay. Seven of pentacles. You kind of, you're wanting to make a decision about something, but some something is standing in your way or getting in the way of something here. We have the Eight of Wands. Okay. We have the Chariot. We have the Fool. And we have the Eight of Swords. Okay, so Eight of Wands and Eight of Swords. Whatever is, <laughs> whatever's getting in your way, I think what you're going to see this week is a shift. It's going to shift and move forwards, okay? Do you know I keep hearing that saying, a stitch in time saves nine. That's what I keep hearing. I think there's been a situation that feels a bit like it's been going round and round in circles and it's been quite hard for you to see you know, the owl energy here to see exactly kind of what you need to do. You do kind of 
actually know. I mean, there's a, it's quite emotive. Actually, the delay in this, ironically enough, is going to be a blessing in disguise. Because there's something you've needed to see that hasn't yet been visible to you. Um, something will become clear and it will create the environment where you can then make the choice or the decision and this this will move forwards you know we have the full card here so you are going to launch into um the new effectively you're going to move beyond this challenge you may find yourself going elsewhere for the answers or elsewhere for the solution to something Whatever it is that's hanging around you that is feeling as if it's not quite moving forwards or it's a bit more emotionally challenging than you thought it would be, whatever this situation is, I do think we're seeing a result this week for you, which is great. I think it will move on. I think you will, in essence, probably choose a slightly new direction or a new solution and you may travel a little bit out of, I say, out of area. Yeah, I, I think you may travel a little bit out of, a little bit further to get the desired result. You may have to go a bit further than you were originally intending. But the result is coming. What I'm also seeing, grandmother of love, granddaughter of life, I, I feel like... Like they're sitting by this kind of doorway here, but it looks like, I mean, they're stone panels, but it looks like a doorway. And I'm kind of hearing as well, nothing is set in stone. You know, the way that you might have, the solution that you might have thought would be the answer may not actually be the answer. Just because there's an obstacle or a challenge in your way, I feel like there'll be a way around this. I don't actually think you're going to have to dive headlong into the challenge. I think there's possibly been some concern about that. And you may have got into a bit of a mindset where you've begun to feel like this isn't going to happen. But actually, I think it will happen. I think it will happen and something will move forwards this week and there'll be a new solution. Now, it may well come to you via a younger man. But actually, the stitch in time saves nine. Don't be pushing for this to happen. I, I do see the resolution this week for you. It is going to move forwards. But again, nothing is set in stone as yet. It's not black and white. There are, there's more than one option here. It, and it's very unlikely that you're going to choose or choose the op option or follow through with the original solution that you might have thought you were tied to or bound by. Actually, I think this is going to change. You, you're probably, yeah, if you were looking to buy something, for example, and it's on your doorstep, um, you're probably actually going to find a bet something better a little bit further afield. But it will move forwards and there will be that set, that new beginning. Those doors will open, even though it feels a bit like for you at the moment, as if you're going around in circles and they're set in stone. I think information will come to you. Actually, an information will come to you that will help you to do this a stitch in time saves nine. If you've got the information available to you, you can make really clear choices as to what, which the right pathway is. I guess it's like putting in an order and then realising that the thing that you were going to buy locally or, you know, right on your doorstep actually turns out to kind of not be exactly the model you wanted. So it's worth going that bit further afield because you'll get a more thorough job here. Something's going to be shown to you, the owl energy, the all-seeing eye here. Yeah, there's blessings here. It's moving forwards. We have the chariot and the fall. It's quite a big leap, really, for you guys, actually. Ultimately, because you're making a choice that's stepping into some slightly new territory because it's not the familiar. 
yeah, rather than, like I said, buying from the same store all the time or buying something locally and then realizing that they don't sell what you needed anymore and you have to look further afield. But we're seeing victory. We're seeing everything move forwards here. And actually, the delay has probably been a blessing, to be quite honest with you. It was worth, that's an, there's all these little sayings coming out that it's worth waiting for. It's another one coming through. It may be a bit uncomfortable while you're in the exploratory phase where you're kind of feel like you're going around in circles and you haven't quite got the solution yet. But it is worthy of being on the lookout because actually the delay is going to create a different outcome or a different solution that will actually avoid a potential problem in the future. I think some of you are aware of the potential problem, but you're not quite sure how to get around it. And the owl energy is very much about showing you, being able to see, you know, in the dark, being able to know that you... You, you don't have to stay, that's coming through as well. You don't have to stay in a situation that isn't working. You can actually move on. Even if it feels like a challenging choice, it really is worth it. Because we've got this real sense of overcoming something here. I'm loving your reading, reading number two. I really am. This feels like a really beneficial, um, providential, that's the word, a providential week where something that has been lingering, getting you down, causing you to have a bit of um, kind of internal debate as to what you should do and what direction you should go in, it kind of gets moved forwards and you're able to launch into a, a different solution here, opening a different door. And uh, really, we're seeing it, it really is a blessing in disguise. Actually, if you'd stayed with the same... It, it would have been a lot tougher in the long run. I, I'm really, really enjoying your reading, beautiful, beautiful souls. So I think as well, the message that you are meant to hear today, twofold really, I think it is. One is you don't have to kind of chase your tail here or try to pursue a particular route that you thought you needed to or had to. If you come up against an obstacle, in this instance, it's not about rising to that challenge. If anything, it's about moving away. If you face an obstacle or something isn't quite right, it's actually a warning sign. Trust your intuition. You're very wise, very, very wise. Trust your intuition. If it's not feeling good, then make the choice to move away. Find an alternative solution. Go to a different store, go to a different supplier, whatever it may be. Yeah, if it's not, if it's not feeling right, rather than getting bound in trying to make it right, trying to make something fit, if it isn't a good fit, accept that it's not a good fit, um, and recognize that's good information and move along. We are seeing vic victory. We're seeing, uh, you know, a potentially different pathway, a different solution, but, but one that's going to work. Bringing in that harvest, something coming to a completion. I think it's going to be a busy, productive, profitable, yeah, busy, exciting, actually, week for you, where something is kind of coming to its completion and, a, and there's a sense of fruition from it. You may, might have to navigate a few things uh, initially, but the key in your reading here and one of the messages coming through is actually if something isn't flowing easily, it's because it's not meant to be. So rather than doing battle, make a choice to walk away and you'll find things will move very, very quickly forwards. Beautiful reading number two. I'm actually loving your reading absolutely loving it. It feels very empowering. Nothing is set in stone and whatever you're shown, a stitch in time saves nine. It's really worth noticing if something doesn't feel right and doing something else because there's no point in giving yourself additional trouble at a later date. Really, really clear. This is a blessing. This is a lovely, lovely week. It may be busy and a bit frantic at times with choices to be made and often choices to be made on the basis of something that isn't working rather than something that is. But hey, 
it's a good way of making choices because it's clear. Reading number two, beautiful souls. I am thrilled that this is going to come to its completion. I am sending you all the love in the world. I think really this is your reading for this week. Very clear messages and we can see things unfolding in a really good way this week for you. So that's fantastic. If you'd like to get a notification as soon as I post a reading, I post readings every Sunday, although this is a special Easter Sunday reading, I do post every Sunday where we ask for immediate guidance from Spirit. I also post a pick a card reading with a very specific question on a Tuesday and a Friday as well, along with some shorts. If you would like to get notification, subscribe and press the little bell icon. I also have a timeless readings playlist where I put a lot of the timeless readings where we're asking specific questions in that in that uh, playlist so you can access those readings at any time that you need to. It's a resource that's there for you. So do use that if that is helpful to you. Reading number two, I'm just sending you the biggest hug in the world. Um, you know, this is... There's just a ton of really good information coming in for you to help you to navigate. Even if it feels a bit tricky, the outcome is really, really, really favourable. Tons and tons and tons of love to you. Hey, beautiful reading number three, people. Thank you so, so much for being here. You have Isa, the rune of ice, and you have the deer energy, which is very gentle very calming, very loving, very compassionate, very centered, and you have the buzzard feather. Now, I feel as if your message immediately that's already coming through is to do with approaching a particular situation with real steady, calm love, really, in its purest form. But let's see what we are shown Let's draw some tea leaves for you. I'm going to take the card at the bottom as well. How interesting. We have ant. Ha ha. Right. All is becoming clear. So we have the card of ant, which is about work, achievement, success. And then we have nest. An emotionally secure, loving family is important to you. I feel you're needing to work at something, but but in a really steady, gentle way, really, um, it's interesting, you have the card Feather. Now we have a feather here. Now although this card actually says someone you know is undependable and insincere, okay, but I, I do feel like you're being asked in response to this to feather your own nest, okay? I feel that maybe you have been out of balance, working your socks off, not just for yourself, but for other people. And really, I am really hearing, feather your own nest, look after you. That's your primary message here. Feather your own nest, look after you. Do you know the fascin fascinating connection to this particular feather as well is that, I mean, I, I have all sorts of feathers and they are gifted as in I find them. You know, when I'm out walking, I will suddenly come across a feather. Do you know all of the buzzard feathers that I have, this one included, all of them have arrived, appeared, been gifted in my life at a time when I was probably in reality, maybe a bit, not, not exactly burnt out, but facing some challenges, maybe trying, struggling to do too much. Uh, and, you know, I would go out, walk on the land, and it would be as if I would be stopped in my tracks. And I feel that just the way in which this feather and the other buzzard feathers that I have came to me was really, really connected to this essence of work by all means work by all means achieve, but do so because you are feathering your own nest. Prioritize yourself, okay? This is about building your own foundation over and above the foundations that I think probably other people would like you basically to invest in them. So this is very, very clear as a primary message for you, beautiful reading number three people. Let's draw more cards for you. May we have more information for reading number three on this beautiful Easter day. What does spirit want you to know about right here and right now? What is your message? I am actually feeling this card from the top. OK, 
okay and oh do you know I'm gonna say it's this one as well okay what are we being shown there we are for reading number three let's have a look and see what we have hold on to me okay and then we also have grace in full flight right i do feel like stuff i i think your world is really busy at the moment i feel like your feet are not touching the ground okay and it's being shown very very clearly the problem is your feet aren't touching the ground and look at this figure here can you see valerian acceptance and do you know in a way this figure i there's there's sort of on the one hand i feel that like this this looks like lightning coming from this figure coming out of the clouds in the sky can you see this and yet in another way i feel like it's putting down roots we have a rat down here it's very interesting someone you know is undependable and insecure i feel like there's that little um is a ub40 song wasn't it there's a rat in the kitchen what are you going to do that kind of feeling about it so i think there's a need to accept that maybe there's stuff that you can't do anything about you know maybe someone this rat is quite lazy <laughs> i feel like this rat is i mean to be fair valerian actually can put us to sleep um it's a relaxant and here is this rat sleeping yeah maybe there's somebody who's a bit lazy doesn't really want to get it together quite happy for you to pick up the slack and it's interesting we have neptune up here now neptune energy is very spiritual it's very dreamy when you have a neptune transit in your chart on occasions it can indicate if it's a difficult aspect it can indicate someone pulling the wool over your eyes actually so there's a deceptive flavor about it because it feels a bit unreal i feel there's a need for you to accept the fact that you you can't you can't do it all and actually i think it also accept the fact that maybe what the way that people are presenting around you um is you know that they're, they're very happy to cash in on your success and your hard work but they're not really investing themselves and their own energy at a level that that they ought to be the rune of isa ice I mean, it speaks of a standstill. Now, I'm not seeing standstill. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a very, very busy world where your feet don't touch the ground. But what I am seeing as well is spirit really saying to you, look, stand still. Look at this situation. Stand still and recognize that you need to feather your own nest. You need to recognize that people are doing their own thing but you know people would like to cash in on your achievement and your success you're a hard worker you're flat out you're really busy you don't need any extras it's time to really look after you and it's a very clear message for you right here and right now the message that you are meant to hear just as these feathers have always stopped me in my tracks literally I have a beautiful array of, um, of birds of prey feathers and particularly the buzzards. They've always come at a time when I've needed to be stopped. Stand still. Let's draw more cards for you and see what else we're showing reading number three. Okay, so let's see. May we ask more information, more advice, more guidance for this week? for reading number three, for my beautiful reading number three people. Hmm. I'm actually going to go with all of those cards. Okay, and also that one, how interesting. Now, I'm gonna put some of these to one side. We'll look at these first. Okay, so we have King of Wands. We have the Chariot, and then we have the Tower. Okay, now we have the Queen of Cups and the Magician both in reverse. Now, I don't always read in reverse cards, but today actually I am. So, this is upright. 
king of wands and the chariot i think there is there's stuff going on in your own world you're really really busy and that stuff is worthy of investment it is worthy of your focus but you're being taken in i think you're feeling like you're being pulled in two different directions the black horse and the white horse and almost as if it's feeling a little bit out of control as if the pressures you're re you're doing your best to respond to the pressures but it's knocking you off balance queen of cups here emotionally it's knocking you off balance and you're losing your own focus here with the magician in reverse sometimes this is an indication of a bit of trickster energy someone sending you off on a wild goose chase i'm not saying it's exactly that I'm not saying there perhaps isn't a need, but nevertheless, somebody sending you off. Do you know what also comes to mind? My beautiful reading number three people. It was a, I remember talking years ago to a builder and he had grown up on a, well, grown up. He was, as a young lad, he worked on a building site and he was very young and very naive and very innocent and very sweet and very gullible. And they sent him off, and I'm sure many of you will have heard this because I think it's probably a fairly sort of ongoing joke, but, you know, fresh out of school, straight into a big building site, and they sent him off to the, build, the builder's merchant to buy a long wait. And, you know, so in goes this lad, asks for a long wait, and he's waiting, and he's waiting, you know, and, and, and it goes on. And, of course, the guys in the builder's yard, you know, were, were also all the builder's merchant, were all in on the joke. And it's this kind of, you know, okay, it's done with humour. There's, you know, but there's something about being sent off on a bit of a wild goose chase. Someone wanting something from you that, to be quite honest, they could do it themselves. They really could do it themselves, but they'd have to step up. They'd have to rise up. And the easy option is actually to kind of pull on your emotional heartstrings a little bit here. You know, yes, I think there's some big stuff at stake, but the point is it's not necessarily your responsibility. I see you being pulled in more than one direction. It's definitely a week to invest in yourself and feather your own nest. Grace in full flight is a lovely card because it really does suggest that you are going to breeze it you're going to fly through this week you're going to achieve what you need to achieve you'll give what you need to give but at the same time um, you'll hold boundaries you'll do it with grace you'll do it with ease what else do we have so three of pentacles okay sitting under the king of wands yeah this is time for you to invest in yourself the Three of Pentacles is a, a time of celebration. You know, investments, money coming into you. Actually, you need to use this money, these resources for yourself. We have the Knight of Pentacles. Very, very interesting because this suggests a very earthy phase of steady growth. Sitting under the chariot, what's needed is a, a genuinely steady approach. Okay. And again, Look at the pentacles coming through here. Work, achievement, success. Um, what we have is, is I, do you know, this is really interesting. I actually do feel this is one of those occasions when if you feather your own nest and you invest in yourself and you invest in change, transformation, it's one of those scenarios where the more you invest in yourself, the more you'll have to give. Okay. Now, it's very interesting that we have the card of justice also in reverse. We can see the goddess Athena here. How interesting, we have an owl here on her shoulder as well. So she's being called to make a decision and this is in reverse. So I'm seeing quite an emotionally charged decision around you, actually, uh, my beautiful pile three people. Yeah, I will draw some extra cards for you guys because... Yeah, there's a lot of debate going on around around a choice, around what you share and who you share with and how much you share with them here. Your primary message is feather your own nest, look after you. But there is an emotional 
element to something that's going on where you're toing and froing about making a decision. And it is quite emotionally loaded. Now, and, and it is, it's slightly, I think it's almost slightly knocking you off track because you're also thinking about it quite a lot. The Eight of Wands, we are seeing potential travel, movement, a new phase, a new journey coming through here. Okay, how interesting. How, how interesting. We'll draw more cards for you. I think we will draw from... We'll use the same tarot, actually, I think. May we please ask for reading number three? What What is all this about? I'm seeing this sort of dilemma being pulled in two different directions, almost as if it's all so fast and so busy that it's really, really hard for you to even stand still for long enough to see things clearly. But actually, you need an anchor point. You need to put down roots here and approach things consistently and methodically. Think about how you use your resources and use your resources wisely. Okay. I'm going to ask about this because I'm I almost also feel as though there could be potentially more than one person in your world, interestingly enough, who would like something from you or is asking something from you. Yeah, more than one person, more than one. It's almost like having, you know, different groups of friends and more than one group of friends is currently in need of something. Feather your own nest, be gentle, be compassionate. May we please ask for more information for reading number three, please. What is all this about? And may we have advice, please? Okay, so Seven of Cups, we're seeing in reverse again, but this is about making choices and decisions. Okay, it's a great card because it suggests that there's more than one direction, there's more than one way to approach this. Okay, it's not black and white. We have the chariot here. It was looking as if you were sort of pushed and pulled. It was one way or the other. It, it's not. There's more than one way to approach this. So that's really good. Now it's in reverse which is interesting, which would suggest to me that you need to stand still, slow right down, and really then think about what the different options are. And again, there may be more than one situation in your world that is requiring or requesting your time, your resources, your energy. have a look and see. Very interesting. I really felt I wanted to look at the card on the base of the pack. Queen of Pentacles. Right, so I am seeing you writing things. Okay, I'm seeing you putting things to right. I'm seeing you moving into a space of, of, of self-care. I always think the Queen of Pentacles, she's the queen of self-care. She knows how to look after her health and her well-being. You know, and she really gets it. She really understands that if she looks after herself, um, you know, there's an abundance to give. So I am seeing, right, fabulous. So we have, the f first of all, the five of wands. So whatever the, the choices, the decisions, the demands that are being made on you at the moment, interestingly enough, I think, I actually think if you just invest in yourself first, I genuinely think you'll have an abundance to give. I think some rewards are coming to you, actually, for your hard work, achievement and success. Six of Wands is a card of victory. You know, in this card, we see Jason and the Org Argonauts, Argonauts, Argonauts. We see Jason and the Argonauts. Here he is trying to obtain the Golden Fleece. When we get to the Six of Wands, he's, he's acquired it, he's got it, he's won, he's victorious, he's got, he's got the goods, okay? Then we have the Ten of Pentacles also in reverse. I really want to say be wise. Be very wise about where you invest your money. 
Be wise about where you invest your time. Be wise about where you invest your resources. Reading number three. There is a situation around you with at least one person, if not more than one setting, where there are people who will very readily jump on the bandwagon of your success. So if you work really, really hard and you do some overtime, they'll be like, oh, wow, she's done overtime. She's got loads of um, loads of dosh this week. We'll, you know, we'll tap her up for some extra funds. It, I say she, he or she, whoever, he, she, they. But do you get the flavour of this? This is like somebody wanting to benefit, wanting to literally ride or achieve something or get something, or they see you as the person who could potentially change something for them by giving them resources. And actually, you need to feather your own nest. Your reading is so unbelievably clear and it's really, really okay to to be successful and then make choices. Do you know with the Ten of Pentacles in reverse, I almost feel as though you're having to, and it's a very interesting message here, you're having to um, not openly share the level of success that you are currently achieving. If you feather your own nest and things are going well and you get a bonus or you're doing overtime or whatever it is you're doing, don't advertise it. Don't promote it. Keep it quiet. Savour it for yourself. Your reading is incredibly clear, actually, reading number three. You are super lovely and it's because you're so super lovely, you're so generous, you're so graceful, you're so compassionate. And this is why. And you're, But you're also really, really, really hard working. And this is why people kind of see you as somebody who could provide for them. But your reading is very, very, very clear. Your reading is saying, look after you, don't advertise the extent of your success. And prioritize, absolutely prioritize your well-being and stand still and Look at what's going on and do it with grace. You can say no gracefully. You know, you're really, really busy. That's okay. Be really, really busy. But you don't have to share all of this in a way that makes people think that you'll be a resource that will support them. Your message is so, so clear this week, um, my beautiful, beautiful pile three people. You know, you are absolutely awesome. You're magic. You're hardworking. You know, you're... Success is so deserved, but you are being thrown off balance and, you know, people perhaps, you know, just not really stepping up because they think that they don't have to because you will. It's got that flavour about it. Beautiful reading number three. Happy Easter. I hope that you are able over this Easter weekend to be taking some time out for you. 100% for you. Okay. Tons and tons and tons of love. Um, these readings where we really do get an immediate message from spirit and we also are given a little bit of a clue as to how the week is going to pan out. Busy, busy, busy for you. Busy, busy, busy. But a, a kind of an underlying pressure in, in how you use your time. Be very clear about how you use your time. Be very, very clear about how you use your resources. And just be thoughtful about what you share with whom. Own your success, but own it for you. This is a week when this is the most powerful message coming through. Now, I do post these readings every Sunday, always with the immediate guidance and the week ahead. And I also post on a Tuesday and Friday, pick a card readings that have very specific questions. We're answering very specific questions. Um, if you find you're having a wobble, I do put all the uh, timeless pick a card readings into a timeless readings playlist. I'm going to put that in the description box because if you have a wobble, click on that playlist. It is a resource that's there for you, full of readings that answer very specific questions. Scroll through the videos and have a look and find one that will answer the right question for you. And if you can't find it, 
um, you know, drop me a message in the comments and suggest a reading, a subject of the reading. You know, thank you to those of you who do. I do check your comments. I can't reply to them all, but I do check your comments. I do read them and I do make a note of all of those suggestions. So I have a kind of a list. And then um, when I'm preparing for the readings, I kind of check out that list and, and tune in with whichever reading is and whichever title is feeling just right. So, yeah, keep up, keep those suggestions coming, Super Souls. Um, Wonderful, wonderful, um, beautiful reading number three, people. Uh, I feel your reading is complete. Your message is very clear. If you would like to get notification of all of my readings, if you um, subscribe and press the little bell icon, they should come into your stream. As I said, I do post on Tuesdays, Fridays and Sunday, every Sunday, and also some shorts in between. And I have other stuff that I do um, on Patreon. I teach how to read uh, the tarot cards and the runes. I do a tutorial every month and also my big extended all zodiac sign readings as well. So do check out um, Patreon. It's a site that works on donations. If that's working for you, you can give as little or as much as you wish. Um, but one way or the other, I'll put all the relevant um, links and things to anything and everything in the description box and the pinned comment. Super souls, feather your own nest. Look after you. Tons and tons and tons of love.